welcome back. It's part two of my first time home buyers series. Today we'll discuss the ins and outs of the home search. While I try to make the process fun and informative, it's important to keep the finish line in sight. So let's begin. Congratulations. You've been pre-approved by your bank. So what happens next? Most buyers think we've reached the end of the game, but the game is just beginning and you need to play it right to get what you want. So let's get the rules of the road out of the way because any one of these mistakes will kill your mortgage. First of all, you can't spend any money on anything that isn't specifically for day-to-day -day living, like groceries, gas, car payments, and rent. One banker describes it as being a ghost. You exist, but you're not opening up new lines of credit, you're not buying a new car or an engagement ring, or even a refrigerator for the new home until after you close. If you withdraw money from your savings account to transfer to your checking account, you need to make sure the numbers match because underwriters can't wrap their heads around numbers that don't match and underwriters are notoriously risk adverse. Finally, not only do you have to qualify for a mortgage, but so does the property. If you are an FHA buyer with 3.5% down, the requirements are far more stringent than for a conventional loan with a minimum down payment of 5%. The house must have a roof with at least five years of life. There can be no exposed wood or chipped and peeling paint, and all of the mechanical systems need to be in working order. Not all, but most foreclosures won't qualify for an FHA insured mortgage without a rehab loan component. Since I could create an entire segment about rehab loans, they should be discussed with your banker. The other type of distressed sale is a short sale, which is when the seller owes the bank more money than the house is currently worth. You could wait for months for the bank to reject your offer. So if you're not still looking while you wait, you could have squandered your time with nothing to show for it. Additionally, these homes probably haven't been maintained because the sellers don't want to or simply don't have any more money to spend on a home they're going to lose anyway. In the age of corona, sellers want to know that you've been pre-approved prior to scheduling showings, and in all circumstances, pre-approval makes you a stronger buyer. Once the bank reviews your documentation, last two pay stubs, last two bank statements, all pages, all accounts, and your last two years of tax returns, they will tell you what they're willing to lend you. You don't have to spend that much, but depending on where you want to live and what your criteria is, you have to be realistic about how far your money will take you. Or, as Confucius say, those who shop with closed mind usually go home empty-handed. So now you know your budget and your criteria, town, type of property, number of bedrooms, bathrooms, etc. So let's get you set up for a search on MLS. Once I've saved your search, you'll receive an email from MLS asking you to log into your client portal. Click on the link and you'll start to receive search results. I see see myself on all searches and check the results daily because sometimes I see something in a search that might be perfect for you. What about Zillow and Realtor.com, you ask? We find that Realtor.com is more accurate, but some buyers are more comfortable with the Zillow platform. So send me links to the properties that interest you, and I'll research them to see if they're active listings on MLS. Once you find properties you want to see, let's get a convenient time to look at them set up. The market is tight with many buyers fighting over the same properties. So I try to get you out as soon as possible so you don't miss anything. The same banker that described buyers as ghosts during the home search process also encourages buyers to see as many properties as possible, even if you don't think a particular property will be the one, so that when you do find a home you can see yourself quarantining in, you know it and won't hesitate to move forward with an offer. What happens once you make an offer? I present your offer to the listing agent who presents it to the seller. The seller has the right to accept your offer, counter your offer, or if they feel the offer is out of line, they can reject your offer without any counter. This happened to me with a Woodbury listing. The first offer was so insultingly low that even though I usually look at an offer as a jump off point for a dialogue, I couldn't justify the offered price and agreed with my sellers when they rejected the offer without a counter. 
A few weeks later, the buyers came back with a reasonable offer that my sellers accepted without countering, and we closed to everyone's satisfaction. If the seller counters your offer, it voids the original contract, giving you the right to accept, counter, or reject and walk away. Negotiations are about terms and price, so you want an agent who can think outside the box because sometimes the seller doesn't have a lot of wiggle room and we have to figure out creative ways to make the deal work. For the sake of this segment, let's assume we have negotiated a contract to purchase. What happens next? Stay tuned because in my next segment, I will describe the process to get you from contract to closing table. Thanks for tuning in. Please forward this video if you know someone who might benefit from this information. And of course, if this raises questions I haven't answered, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Ciao.